This is a jet plane. And this channel tells you everything you need to know about airplanes. Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Tonight, we're going to bring you the third and final installment on how airplanes get their names. How do they get their names? Is it contests, company themes? Let's take a look. Far and away, company themes are the vast majority of airplane names in any country around the world. Let's take a look at a few. I mean, we talked about Lockheed uh, being the galactic uh, theme, uh, constellation, stars, planets, uh, all sorts of uh, things involving the universe. Of course, we left out the gods like Hercules. And this Hercules is not to be confused with this Hercules. We'll be bringing you an episode on the uh, history of Howard Hughes and his incredible airplanes uh, in the near future. Republic uh, used the word thunder. Well, we thought we had them all. We left out thunder flash. And that's a play on words because the airplane is a photo recon aircraft. But where did the name Rainbow come from? Well, the Republic Rainbow was built in 1946, and the name was symbolic of the peace at the end of the rainbow after the war. Uh, when the Republic Thunderbolts had done uh, their duty in helping the Allies win World War II. And speaking of companies, who built these airplanes? Was it McDonnell Douglas? Or was it Boeing, who acquired McDonnell Douglas and Rockwell in 1997? Well, at the top, we have a C-17. At the bottom, the F-18 Hornet. And the rule is that the... Uh, name of the company that is building the airplanes today or when they went out of production uh, was indeed the proper manufacturer of the aircraft. So this would be the Boeing C-17 and the Boeing Hornet. Of course, the Blues are flying the Super Hornet today. But uh, that rule applies to legacy aircraft as follows. This is a Boeing B-1B Lancer. And this would be a Lockheed Martin F-16, originally built by General Dynamics, which used to be Convair. But this is not a Boeing DC-3 or a Boeing P-51 Mustang. Uh, the type of mission. Uh, this is kind of interesting. We have the F-14 Tomcat, uh, considered uh, by anyone who flew it, uh, probably the greatest Navy fighter ever done. Um, it was a fleet defense aircraft, fleet uh, interceptor. Uh, in the original role, and then it was modified. Uh, the D model had a digital rear cockpit, upgraded engines, and uh, uh, that was called the Super Tomcat, but it was modified for the ground attack role, and that name was the Bombcat. Vertijet is self-explanatory, one of the coolest names ever. And speaking of vertical flight, I had an irate viewer tell me that I must hate Convair because I don't put enough Convair airplanes in my uh, videos, really. Uh, but uh, here's a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This goes straight up, and then it transitions to horizontal flight, and then back to vertical flight, and then lands like so. This could only be called the Pogo. Uh, a bomber called the Destroyer, yeah or an airplane that extends the range of other airplanes by refueling it, well, KC-10 Extender. And on a personal note, this was not one of my favorite names uh, because I was uh, working very closely on the program in Long Beach uh, when we won the contract in 1982, but KC-10 Extender. The appearance of the airplane, this is interesting. If you look at the contra-rotating pusher props on the Douglas XB-42, you could only call it the Mixmaster and obviously the Stiletto for the X3, and the Jolly Green Giant for the Sikorsky HH3 Rescue Helicopter. Acronyms, yeah, there's uh, still a few of those. The Bomark, a very famous name in air defense, the uh, Boeing missile, and it was actually a, a collaboration between Boeing and the Michigan Aeronautical Research Center, Bomark. Wiggy, wing in ground effect, the uh, famed Russian Caspian Sea Monster and the Douglas proposal you see in the illustration. This is fun, the Mitsubishi MU-2. Uh, this is a Japanese uh, turboprop in the mid 60s, great little airplane. And in the United States, it was marketed by Mooney. Well, if you count in Japanese, Ichini, Sanshi, 
Ni is the number two in Japanese. So Muni is M-U-2. Pretty clever. Ah, the numbers racket. Can't get enough of this stuff. Oh, my gosh. Okay, the F4U Corsair II. Uh, what's that? It was never named the Corsair II? Well, it should have been. I'm sure I'll get comments on this. Here's why. The original Corsair was an observation biplane, uh, land-based, the O2U and O3U later version on a float. This was the original Corsair. So that would make this Corsair, the Corsair II, which would make this Corsair, the Corsair III. Why that didn't happen, I don't really know, but uh, go figure. So now we go from the terrible twos to the terrific threes. The F-8 Crusader, later version uh, with the radar nose and the sidewinders, the Crusader II, and the ultimate uh, Crusader, the fastest, uh, Navy's fastest single engine jet aircraft, the XF-8U-3 Crusader III. We have the C-74 Globemaster from Douglas, the 124 Globemaster II. That would make this the Globemaster III, the C-17. Here's a nice shot of the Grumman Gulfstream over Fire Island, New York. This is a great little twin turboprop executive airplane in the late 1950s. And believe it or not, the first commercial customer was Walt Disney. His call sign uh, when in the air was Mickey One. The Gulfstream II was a jet version with Rolls-Royce engines and a T-tail. Gulfstream III was an upgraded version of the two. Here's the uh, Gulfstream IV. And of course you have the five and this, well, I think you, I think you get the idea. Airliner names. Now these are not from the manufacturer necessarily. They're uh, marketing names from the airline, but they deserve mention too. We have flagships, Astrojets, mainliners, Clippers, Yellowbirds, and Golden Falcons. Let's take a look. American Airlines had the flagships going back to the DC-3, and uh, the piston-powered flagships were named after cities in the United States, while jet flagships were named after states in the United States. When the fan jet engines came in the early 1960s, all the American airplanes were renamed Astrojet. Show of hands if you had this airport set as a kid. United had the mainliners, Pan Am had the clippers, and TWA had the star of, well, they get the record for most <clears throat> types of themes for a single airplane, the Lockheed Connie. The early Connies were named for countries around the world, cities around the world. Uh, the later models were named after states in the United States, rivers in the world, and the Super G Connies, the 1049G, uh, these airplanes were named after the castles in Europe. This is the star of Windsor. JetBlue actually put the word blue in a name on the nose of their airplanes. So here's the theme, and you can see the, uh, the common theme through the list. But when you get to the bottom, uh, Canyon Blue, this is my personal favorite. It's kind of an inside uh, dig uh, because Canyon Blue is the official color of Southwest Airlines. Nice one. Yeah, the Northeast Yellow Birds, a very uh, elegant scheme designed by the legendary industrial designer Raymond Lowy. And, he, and the Golden Falcon. I'm going to save the airline for the Golden Falcon till the end because we have a little surprise for you. Uh, in the category of other, we have things like, well, we're back to Russian NATO code names. Can't get enough of these. We talked about F for fighters. Um, H for helicopter, C for cargo, but take a look at all the fighter names, uh, which are noticed, notice that they're all two syllables. Every one of them. There's a reason for that. Uh, when you get to cargo airplanes, the uh, two syllable names are on the left and the one syllable names are on the right. And the reason is two syllables denotes a jet airplane. One syllable denotes a prop airplane. Missiles, we had 117 names, should have been 118. We left out Vanguard. But uh, take a look at this list. We have the snark, and we didn't explain where that comes from. That's actually a contraction of the word snake and shark. You put those together and you get snark, which is from a Lewis Carroll fairy tale in the late 1800s. Mythical creature. 
Uh, the Snarks were launched out of Patrick Air Force Base uh, near Cape Canaveral, Florida, and they were traveling on uh, routes to the southeast out over the South Atlantic where they would impact, and the lower part of the Atlantic Ocean was renamed Snark Infested Waters as a result. Nicknames, can't get enough of these either. Lead Sled was uh, the Blackbird series and also a number of other uh, 19, late 1950s, early 1960s jet airplanes because they were so heavy. And SPAD, uh, the Douglas Sky Raider used in Southeast Asia. I I've heard a couple of different names, uh, uh, reasons for this. The uh, first was an acronym for single place AD. But uh, the story I always heard is that the SPADs were uh, affectionately nicknamed that for their slow speed compared to all the jets that uh, they worked with. And so the SPAD, of course, was the World War I fighter that you see here. Now, speaking of SPADs, here's probably the most famous SPAD pilot, Ace Eddie Rickenbacker. And uh, later in life, Eddie, uh, Captain Eddie had an airline which used the names Golden Falcon. And that airline was Eastern. This color scheme for me personally, the, my favorite of all time, I think the greatest color scheme ever applied to a jet airliner, Eastern's Golden Falcon DC-8 jet. Well, there you have it. Our third and final installment on how airplanes get their names. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And I want to say thanks to you, the viewers. Uh, I am so uh, thrilled to bring these to you every week. And I thank you so much for the great comments. Uh, it really means a lot. And uh, uh, thank you for being aboard. If you haven't subscribed, hit the uh, 707 at uh, lower right. And uh, when you see that, and uh, please, uh, we'd be happy to have you on the channel. Uh, a little sneak preview for you. Uh, we're going to be bringing you the third and final installment in our escape system series on rocket sleds. And that'll be posted next week. So thanks again for watching. And as always, take care.